Okay, if everybody's sitting comfortably, then we'll begin. And the next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 8606 in the name of Tavish Scott on oncology at Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I'd invite those members who wish to speak in this debate to press their request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. Mr Scott, if you're ready, seven minutes, please. Presiding officer, in 2012, cancer was the cause of one-third of all deaths of men and women in Shetland. The disease and how islanders tackle cancer is why I have initiated this parliamentary debate. And I thank colleagues from my own Liberal Democrat benches, the Conservatives and Labour, for supporting this motion on oncology services at Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. The shocking death statistics for Shetland highlight why the rising number of people in need of specialist cancer care is one of the great health challenges of the 21st century. Medical advances are enormous, but the investment in cancer research still has so much further to go. Treatment of this disease depends on specialist medical staff across the varieties of cancer that afflict men and women. Trained staff are essential, and enough trained staff even more so. Today in Parliament, I wish to highlight the importance of ARI having a full complement of trained expertise to diagnose, treat and continue helping people to fight cancer. It's not just the Granite City that depends on the ARI for cancer care. Patients arrive from across the North East and the islands. Orkney and Shetland send islanders to the ARI for a variety of specialist care and procedures. Aberdeen is the closest major hospital to Shetland. Travel still means an hour's flight south or, and a hospital transfer or a 12-hour overnight ferry crossing. Now, that's straightforward for the hale and hearty. But if you're sick or worried and fearing the worst, then a flight or the north boat is a major factor. I've shared too many planes home from Aberdeen with Shetlanders after hospital treatment, and it is no picnic. So when it comes to cancer treatment, and in particular chemotherapy and radiotherapy, the medical advice is to limit the stress of travel. Let me share a couple of observations made to me by Shetland GP practices. Bixter's GP said, the service provided by Aberdeen to all Shetland patients means keeping travel times and stress on patients and family to an absolute minimum. And citing the challenges for accompanying families, Yale's GP said, Aberdeen is far enough to travel as it is, and if it were further, relatives may not be able to visit. The arduous nature of cancer treatment dictates what the body and mind can endure. Resting between bouts of radiotherapy is essential. Returning home to Shetland between treatments is unrealistic and for many, frankly, impossible. Liam MacArthur is going to mention this, and I hope the Minister will listen carefully to what he says on that point. So geography dictates so much more of the cancer treatment pattern, and that's why Clan Haven in Aberdeen is so important. It's so much more than just a place to stay. It's a centre of peace, of love, and emotional support for Shetlanders going through the mental and physical efforts of care. Cancer patients stay for free and families accompanying them for a fraction of a hotel cost in the overheated Aberdeen economy. I want to stress the importance of a loved one accompanying a cancer patient. The emotional turmoil of this disease is absolutely enormous. So a wife, a husband, a nephew or just a friend is absolutely critical. They need somewhere to stay and that's why Clan is so good. Shetland raised over £600,000 for the new Clan Haven. The redoubtable Debbie Thompson has shown me around. It's a wonderful place with wonderful staff. 39 Shetlanders stayed at Clan last year as they received radiotherapy for an average of 27 nights each. That's how important it is. The, North of, the NHS North of Scotland Planning Group acknowledged this just last week, saying, what has been evident in organising external support has been the difficulties in coordinating accommodation. NHS Grampian, in collaboration with CLAN, provide a first-class service for accommodation support, which other boards find difficult to match. That's a powerful testament to the service that is arranged to help islanders in Aberdeen that is simply not replicated anywhere else. And it is why for islanders who are being referred elsewhere should be the last resort and based on a particular clinical need, not on a shortage of oncology staff at ARI. So when people started approaching me last year saying the ARI's oncology department was understaffed, alarm bells rang. 
In October, a constituent wrote to me saying this, I was down in Aberdeen yesterday seeing my oncologist halfway through my chemo. Part of this plan was for my radiotherapy treatment. He hit me with a bombshell. It turns out that due to a lack of oncologists who specialise in radiotherapy, I may have to receive my treatment in Glasgow, Edinburgh, Dundee or Inverness. Now, as it turns out, following pressure from NHS Shetland, Shetland-based GPs, patients and many others, that has been minimised. The Health Secretary's letter to me of the 18th of November in response to my representation stated that ARI were three consultants under the required complement to cope with the workload. Today, that number, I understand, has been reduced to one. The Chief Executive of NHS Grampian says the numbers of North Isles patients who have actually been referred elsewhere in Scotland are very small. That's something I very strongly welcome. It proves that pressure can pay off, but it's also clear what would have happened had this matter not been pushed. I thank the Cabinet Secretary who responded to my representations, and I hope that Alec Neil will maintain his pressure on this matter. Oncology, as NHS Grampian tells me, is understaffed. I thank Mr Carey indeed for his candour. There have been a variety of temporary staff locums, and that's not good for continuity of care, nor indeed for keeping NHS Grampian's budget in order. Shetland GPs have made me aware of complaints regarding a locum at ARI who is no longer practising in Aberdeen. That rather makes a point about permanent staff and the importance of quality of care. It also highlights the inherent weaknesses of a system that depends on locums. So surely the wider picture too must be addressed. Why is there a shortage of oncologists? Is the power of medical schools and teaching hospitals across the UK too great? Training specialist cancer care staff will be taking place now for five or more years in the future. There must be an argument surely for training more staff rather than less. The quantity of temporary appointments, not just in cancer care, but, but across other specialisms, means that too much of the NHS budget is spent on higher payments to short-term staff than is desirable. I hope ministers are giving that considerable attention. Shetland and Orkney patients need cancer care of the highest quality in the closest hospital to the Isles. Reducing the enormous stress and worry of this killer disease, one that is responsible for one-third of male and female Shetland deaths, is an NHS challenge. That challenge is best met in Aberdeen, not by referring people across Scotland, but as in a matter that is local to their health setting as possible, where they can have the support of family and loved ones, which is easier to arrange and maintain throughout treatment. I ask the government to recognise this as an issue, not just in January 2014, but for every January, and to work with Grampian and the Island Health Boards to deliver the cancer care my constituents need. Many thanks. I call on Lewis Macdonald to be followed by Dennis Robertson. Four minutes, please. Thank you very much, and I congratulate Tavish Scott on bringing forward this very important issue for debate today. He has rightly highlighted the impact on patients and their families from Shetland and Orkney, who now have to travel to the Central Belt for care and treatment, which used to be but is not currently uh, always available in Aberdeen. I have family connections with Shetland, as Mr Scott knows, and I am keenly aware of the close ties between the islands and Aberdeen in healthcare and much besides. One such tie already mentioned is CLAN, Cancer Link Aberdeen and North, which provides such outstanding support for cancer patients and their families travelling to Aberdeen for treatment from across the North and the North East, as well as the Northern Isles. And I want to pay tribute to that work, as indeed Mr Scott has done. I also want to mention Calico, Cancer and Leukaemia in Children Oriented, which works to support children with cancers and their families uh, in the North East itself. Last year, they drew my attention to concerns they had about the planned retirement of the radiation oncologist at Aberdeen Royal Infirmary, who has specialised in radiotherapy uh, for children with cancer, one of three uh, oncologist retirements, which was then in the offing. If that uh, individual is not replaced by another consultant able to deliver the same service, far more children may have to travel to the central belt for treatment uh, in the future than in the past. NHS Grampian, although, again, they were uh, very willing and able to provide information, they couldn't tell me uh, whether or when a new consultant would be rec recruited with the same uh, level of specialism in treating children. It would be a tragedy if such a valuable service were to be lost for, from Aberdeen, particularly if that were to happen by default. It is one thing to plan the delivery of services in the context of a managed clinical network. It's quite another to lose local services simply through an inability to recruit staff. 
Families understand that there will be times when a specific treatment requires a child to travel to Glasgow or elsewhere, but most curative and palliative radiotherapy has been, has been delivered locally in Aberdeen in the past, and that is something those families very much want to see continue in the future. And it's not just children. Over the last few months, as has been said, many adult patients too have had to travel to the Central Belt for cancer treatment, which can be extremely hard for seriously ill adults as well as for children and families. And that again comes down to difficulties with recruitment, and it is up to the Scottish Government to help to meet those difficulties. Alex Neil told Parliament last month that every post reported to be vacant for more than three months had been filled as a result of joint working between the relevant NHS board and the Scottish Government. Clearly that is welcome, but three months is a long time for cancer patients in need of treatment. And when a number of oncologists are reaching planned retirement dates at much the same time, as has happened recently in Aberdeen, more could and should be done to recruit uh, consultants and to make sure the properly trained people are available in advance of those retirements. That is surely the point of workforce planning. In the meantime, I hope the Minister today, today can undertake to work with NHS Grampian to ensure that the post of radiation oncologist specialising in radiotherapy for children will be filled. I hope Ministers will also look again at the case for supplementary pay for NHS staff in Grampian, where recruitment at all grades is hampered by a high cost of living comparable only with Greater London. Quite apart from pay, funding of NHS Grampian still falls more than £30 million short of what it should be under the NRAC formula calculated and endorsed by this government uh, as long ago as 2007. There is surely therefore scope for a positive initiative to support recruitment and retention in NHS Grampian as well as specific action on oncology and I hope that ministers will take steps in that direction after today's debate. Thank you. Now I call on Dennis Robertson to be followed by Nanette Milne. Hey, thank you, Presiding Officer. And I too would like to congratulate Tavis Scott for bringing this very important debate to the Chamber. Uh, patient and patient care is, is of great concern, I think, to us all. And certainly those uh, suffering from cancer require, I think, the utmost care. Um, NHS Grampian have said it was an unprecedented um, problem in terms of the recruitment due to the specialism of oncology. Uh, and they've cited basically that uh, the same problems were being um, uh, in, in NHS Highland and in Tayside. Pretty almost, it, it seems to me that there's a lack of, uh, um, sort of recognition in terms of uh, the, the post uh, in terms of recruitment and uh, I mean they, they had maternity leave. Surely, surely presiding officer, uh, NHS Grampian would be able to put in place a appropriate a cover for things like maternity leave. NHS Grampian um, have had 33 patients based on clinical uh, need, they say, and priority, um, having treatment out with the, the Grampian area to Glasgow and Edinburgh. Presenting officer, that's 33 patients too many. And as Tavis Scott rightly said, uh, and uh, I think together with Lewis MacDonald, um, the, the anxiety that these patients have and their families and carers is compounded by the fact that they have to move out with the area. And quite often the logistics of patients having to go to either Edinburgh or Glasgow may not be supported by their friends or relatives. The work that CLAN provide in Aberdeen and the support is immeasurable. Um, the support given is something that is obviously welcomed. But in terms of what it does for the patient themselves, uh, as I said, is absolutely immeasurable. It's something that we need to acknowledge. And I think NHS Grampian are failing if they don't actually recognise the, the absolute importance of that ongoing care. Now, we do recognise that Grampian, uh, NHS Grampian have taken steps in October and November in terms of recruitment, and they have just last week recruited a new oncology specialist, and that is to be welcomed. But it does still beg the question, presiding officer, why it has taken so long. If there is a national uh, problem in, in recruitment of oncology to NHS boards in Scotland, then I would ask the, the Minister and the Cabinet Secretary to ask why this indeed is such a problem. 
And if we need to ensure that we are providing the appropriate care for our cancer patients throughout the Grampian area, and I think and especially for those that come from the islands like Shetland and Orkney, we need to ensure that these patients are given an even higher priority than those perhaps living within the city boundaries. We need to ensure that NHS Grampian have a plan, a plan to ensure that we don't we don't get into the position of they've said an unpresented, unpresented, no, oh, anyway, a very difficult problem that they've, they've experienced recently. Um, I think it is definitely a lack of planning and they need to actually resolve that uh, for the future. I think we need to try and look at what else can be done to try and provide the appropriate care for those having to travel from Shetland and Orkney that Tavis Scott has mentioned. He said it's no picnic, absolutely not. But it's no picnic for those that travel from the, uh, the far reaches of uh, Aberdeenshire as well. People having to travel into the city from uh, areas like sort of Bremar, Aboyne, have to do so. And, and it takes just as long, I can assure Tavis Scott, to get from those areas to the uh, Aberdeen Royal as it does by flying from Shetland. Presiding officer, NHS Grampian, I, I believe, need to resolve this problem and resolve it quickly. Richard Carey and the board, I think, are taking the appropriate steps. But if we look at their target, meeting their targets in terms of um, a, from referral to treatment, they have not performed particularly well in 2013. You might wish to draw to a close soon. Please. Yes, presiding officer. Um, and I know that they, they hope to have resolved that problem and get up to the 95% target uh, in the very near future. Once again, can I congratulate Tavis Scott for bringing this very important uh, debate to the chamber. And I sincerely hope that NHS Grampian can resolve this problem for the patients of the future. Thank you. Well done. Now call on Annette Milne to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I congratulate Tavish Scott on gaining the cross-party support to allow this important and topical issue to be discussed here today. Whilst the debate focuses specifically on the recent staffing problems experienced in Aberdeen, the issue is a further illustration of the sort of pressures on the, today's NHS that were discussed in the Chamber only yesterday afternoon. I'm grateful, grateful to NHS Grampian for sending an up-to-date briefing on the oncology service in that part of my region. And it's clear that they have faced very serious workforce challenges, which they have been tackling since October last year, with some positive outcomes. During the second half of 2013, Grampian was affected, as were other health boards in the north of Scotland, including Highland and Tayside, by a national shortage of suitably qualified oncologists, especially in neuro-oncology and head and neck cancers. This was compounded by a number of short-term vacancies due to maternity leave, for example. To overcome this, the board has been actively trying to find new staff, for example, by recruiting a new full-time consultant clinical oncologist, now in post, as Dennis Robertson said, and advertising for a part-time consultant medical oncologist post, currently attracting experienced applicants, as well as locum cover for maternity leave, the appointment of a nurse specialist in GU oncology, and the opening up of bed space capacity with healthcare worker support in the new emergency care centre amongst other specific actions to try and overcome the workforce problems. All this at a significant e estimated extra cost for 2014-15 of over £1.3 million, largely to be funded for NH NHS Grampian's own resources, which are, as Lewis MacDonald has said, currently underfunded uh, compared to other health boards, um, with a small contribution from the Scottish Government via its Detect Cancer Early initiative. So the situation is now better than it was three months ago. But in the meantime, patients have had to go elsewhere for specialist treatment, and hence this debate. Clearly, the first priority has to be to ensure that patients with cancer or any other serious condition are given the most effective and the safest treatment for their condition. And if this does mean they have to travel some distance for it, then so be it. But I have a great deal of sympathy for Tavish Scott's constituents from Shetland and patients from Orkney, for whom Aberdeen is the nearest specialist centre. The Islander, these islanders have, over many years, accepted the journey to Aberdeen and the need to stay there during treatment, and have become familiar with the excellent facilities provided by CLAN, particularly its new CLAN Haven residential wing, which I visited recently and which is indeed very impressive. So then to be told they'll have to go even further, 
for hospitals in the central belt for their treatment must put significant added stress on these patients and their families who are already traumatised by a devastating diagnosis. Treatment for cancer, be it chemo or radiotherapy, can be very unpleasant and very tiring for patients, and the psychological stress can be even worse. And that's only compounded by being far from home and in unfamiliar surroundings away from family and friends. This in itself can hinder recovery, and it's extremely important to give patients every possible support, both physical and psychological. This is where Clanhaven is so effective, and I certainly have had great appreciation for its facilities expressed to me by friends in Aberdeenshire eh, who have stayed there whilst having treatment at ARI. The recent situation at Aberdeen Royal Infirmary is a worrying indicator of the workforce pressures on the NHS in Scotland, which are undoubtedly going to increase as the population ages and the incidence of cancer and degenerative diseases grows as predicted. NHS Grampian have clearly been trying very hard to resolve the situation, but I fear we can expect to hear of further similar experiences throughout Scotland as time goes on. Presiding officer, I'll conclude by once again thanking Tavish Scott for highlighting the very serious issue of oncology provision in Aberdeen on behalf of his constituents, and I wish them well for the future, with treatment hopefully available at least a little bit closer to home. Thank you. Many thanks. Now, Colin Liam MacArthur to be followed by Malcolm Chisholm. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer, and like others, can I uh, offer my congratulations to my friend and colleague Tavish Scott for allowing Parliament to debate this uh, serious issue today. Uh, the issues that Tavish Scott outlined in relation to the experience of his constituents reflect very much the experience of, of my constituents in Orkney, and therefore um, I would uh, echo his remarks and try to make some additional points that I think are relevant to this debate. But at the outset, like Lewis MacDonald and Milne, Dennis Robertson and indeed Tavish Scott, can I put on record my admiration and gratitude to the staff and volunteers at CLAN who do such tremendous work on behalf of cancer sufferers and their families, uh, not just in the islands but across the North East, as Lewis MacDonald uh, highlighted. I also uh, declare a personal interest. My father was diagnosed uh, with prostate cancer a couple of years ago. Uh, thankfully, his surgery and treatment proved highly effective, further illustrating uh, the importance of getting yourself checked regularly uh, and markedly improved recovery and survival rates for those whose cancer is detected and diagnosed early. But I know how invaluable not just my father but my mother as well found the support provided by CLAN both in Aberdeen but also uh, back in Orkney. The advice, the therapies, the opportunity to, to talk to others going through a similar experience. All these things helped at the most difficult of times. And of course the accommodation provided by CLAN was particularly welcome. And again, not just in Aberdeen. As residents of one of the outer North Isles in Orkney, very often my parents were required to overnight in Kirkwall en route to and from appointments or treatment in Aberdeen. They were therefore extremely grateful uh, to be able to access Clan's facilities in the Toon. My parents' experience was highly typical of that for many of my constituents, and I want therefore, as Tavish Scott intimated, to highlight a specific concern I have about changes I believe are being considered for the way in which the health boards in Grampian, Orkney and Shetland support those from the islands undergoing cancer treatment. During a visit I made to Clan earlier this week, I was told that despite its popularity with patients and their families, the Haven is currently operating at a loss of around £100,000 a year. While fundraising efforts, not least in Orkney and Shetland, have proved phenomenally successful over the years, there are issues, I think, around core funding. Debbie Thompson explained that CLAN have requested a, uh, an increase from £30 a night to £35 a night, which would still not cover the full cost, but would at least reduce uh, the overall deficit. However, I understand that NHS Grampian and the Island Health Boards are considering a scheme whereby patients would have their costs paid Monday through Thursday, but would be expected to return home on a Friday and over the weekend. And I'm, I'm not clear about the circumstances in which this would apply, but it strikes me as utter madness in terms of the welfare and well-being of patients undergoing or trying to recover from surgery or treatment. As Tavish Scott highlighted earlier, the strain placed on patients uh, from travelling back and forth for treatment takes its toll. Doing so each and every weekend would be bordering on intolerable. And for those such as my parents living in the smaller islands, it would be logistically impossible. Moreover, I can't actually see any cost saving either, though given that the travel costs would be borne centrally rather than by the individual boards, that perhaps is a perverse incentive to act in this way. Perhaps the Minister can address this in his widening up speech, or, or at least um, give an assurance that he will look into this as a matter of uh, urgency for the sake of patients in my constituency uh, and in Shetland. Deputy Presiding Officer, CLAN is not just there as a resource for those from the islands, 
but the importance of the support structure it, the Red Cross and others provide for those who find themselves far from home for lengthy periods and often under severe physical and emotional stress really cannot be overstated. That is the reason uh, there has been such concern about the implications of staffing uh, shortages within the oncology department at Aberdeen. Other hospitals and health boards uh, I know uh, have been affected, but nowhere I believe is there the same concentration of patients being treated for a variety of cancers, all of whom have to travel such long distances and find themselves so far from their network of family and friends. As Tavis Scott indicated, the numbers of Orkney and Shetland patients actually unable to be treated in Aberdeen have been mercifully low. Uh, and it appears that uh, now uh, Aberdeen is only a single consultant vacancy uh, left to fill. Uh, like Tavish, I, I wish to acknowledge the efforts of Richard Carey and his team at NHS Grampian, as well as the intervention of the Health Secretary at the back end of last year. Uh, but I would, uh, I think, associate myself with some of the questions Dennis Robertson was uh, asking about how things were allowed to get to the stage uh, they were at uh, during the latter part of last year. And I also think the points that Tavish Scott made about the need for permanent appointments to ensure continuity and quality of care are very well made. This is certainly an issue where there will need to be a careful watching brief. For now, I congratulate Tavis Scott once again for giving Parliament an opportunity to debate these important issues. And with my Movember uh, ambassador hat on, conclude by urging anyone watching, listening or reading uh, this debate to get themselves checked. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call on Malcolm Chisholm, after which we will move the closing speech from the Mr. Minister. Officer, I would like to congratulate Tavish Scott on bringing forward this debate. And clearly, I am not speaking here as a local member, but I am pleased uh, with Nanette Milne to be a co-convener of the Cross-Party Group on Cancer. And I also think the debate does raise uh, interesting general issues, firstly about the staffing uh, of radiotherapy centres, but I think it also uh, reminds us of what I regard as an important principle that healthcare should be provided as near to home as is clinically uh, appropriate. In fact, at a re recent meeting of the cross-party group, well, fairly recent, on, um, on radiotherapy, Professor Alan Roger, former director of the Beetson Centre, reminded us of the importance of radiotherapy, and not everybody does recognise that. He, he talked about a survey that uh, showed that 89 per cent of people uh, had heard about radiotherapy. Only 9 per cent uh, thought it was a modern cancer treatment. Well, how wrong they are. In fact, quite apart from its palliative role, far more people are cured by radiotherapy than, than by uh, chemotherapy. And again, according to Professor Roger, research suggested that 52% of cancer patients can benefit from radiotherapy. The numbers receiving in Scotland, he said, were 45%, which is ahead of England, which has 37%. But because of the rising, increasing incidence of cancer within the elderly population, clearly there is a rising demand for services. And some of the, those general pressures are illustrated by what has been happening in Aberdeen. Now, of course, this took me back to the beginning of the century when we had the enormous crisis at the Beetson Cancer Centre based on several uh, staff shortages in different uh, 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 clinical grades, but particularly a shortage uh, of clinical oncologists. And since then, there has, of course, been uh, a general improvement, far more uh, 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 clinical on oncologists employed across Scotland on the development of radiotherapy, new forms of it, such as intensity modulated radiotherapy. But uh, what we are hearing today is that once again, there is a problem with the number of clinical oncologists. And it's not just in Aberdeen, because there are great pressures uh, on cancer centres in the central belt uh, as well. There are clearly other shortages as well, particularly physicists, but clinical oncologists is the particular focus of the debate today. Now, in terms of uh, care as close to home as is clinically appropriate, clearly for radiotherapy, that can't just be on your doorstep. You have to go to one of the, the five cancer centres in Scotland, and Aberdeen is the one that is certainly the appropriate one for the constituents of uh, Tavish Scott. If it was chemotherapy, well, yes, that could be delivered in Shetland, Orkney and all sorts of localities, and I believe is increasingly so. So that's been a great development. But for radiotherapy, Aberdeen is the appropriate place. And clearly, I share the concerns of local members uh, about the problems that have arisen uh, in Aberdeen, particularly in relation to clinical oncology. Now, I'm told, and Tavish Scott has reminded us, that that uh, situation has improved recently, and no doubt partly due to his campaigning and the campaigning of, of, of my own colleagues, uh, Lewis MacDonald uh, 
uh, and Richard Baker as well, but uh, it does illustrate the problem that there is a national shortage uh, of clinical oncologists, and that's been uh, even more uh, serious in Aberdeen than in some other uh, places. So that clearly is a matter that continues uh, to demand the attention of the Scottish Government and indeed uh, the UK Government. Now, the other important point that Tavish Scott made was that there are particular reasons for uh, uh, his uh, constituents uh, uh, wanting to be re receive treatment in Aberdeen because of the superb services provided by Clan Haven. And I, I watched the video on their website uh, before the debate, and clearly I was impressed, as others uh, are uh, who have uh, seen the service at first hand. It does remind us of the importance of person centred holistic care. Uh, as part of cancer treatment, and clearly Clan Haven provides that. My time's up, but I think uh, that is another reason why treatment must be provided in Aberdeen for all those uh, for whom that is the appropriate centre. Many thanks. Now I call on the Minister, Michael Matheson, to close the debate on behalf of the Government. Up to seven minutes, please, Minister, or thereby. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I, like uh, others, offer my congratulations to Tavish Scott in securing time for this important debate? And I have listened with real interest to all of those local members who have raised concerns around the uh, situation with the uh, services in the north of uh, the country. And I, uh, I fully understand the concerns that uh, Tavish Scott has raised about the challenges for uh, his own constituents and for Liam MacArthur's constituents where they are undergoing what is a, a very stressful and a very difficult time going through cancer treatment and the travelling which is involved in that, which uh, uh, obviously compounds that. And I uh, fully appreciate uh, the challenges that that uh, creates. Uh, all the more so why I think we have particular gratitude for uh, uh, the hard work and the generosity of the uh, clan organisation in Aberdeen and the, the work that they provide at the Clan Haven, uh, which I know uh, provides invaluable support. Uh, to people who are affected by cancer. And I understand the concerns that Liam MacArthur has raised uh, regarding the potential changes that NHS Grampian are considering, and I'll uh, undertake to have those issues uh, looked into uh, and to provide a response to him in that matter. And, of course, I stand ready to meet with him uh, to discuss that if he continues to be concerned about the approach that the Board are taking. I also want to put on record that uh, I recognise the uh, stress and strain that the staff within NHS Grampian have been under uh, during this particular period of time as well. Uh, and our NHS staff have worked tremendously hard uh, during that period of time to try and help to sustain uh, services as best they can uh, with the uh, staff limitations that they've had. And I uh, want to acknowledge that and to thank them for uh, the work that they have undertaken uh, during what has been a very uh, stressful period. I think in Tavish Scott's uh, comments, he recognised that the Scottish Government do uh, uh, acknowledge and recognise that this is a priority that has to be resolved uh, and dealt with effectively, as uh, was set out in the Cabinet Secretary's response to him uh, last year. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the situation that has developed in the north of uh, Scotland has come about through uh, a result of a, a unique combination of different uh, factors, some of which are planned and some of which are not have been unplanned uh, for. Uh, for example, there have been retirals, maternity leave, sick leave, uh, and there has also been the multiple failed uh, attempts to recruit uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, call, to the workforce uh, in order to deal with some of these pressures, uh, which has clearly impacted on uh, capacity and capability within the service to be able to deliver all of the cancer services uh, uh, that it would uh, wish to do, including that of uh, uh, radiotherapy. And radiotherapy is extremely important because uh, radiotherapy um, uh, for many people with cancer, uh, some 40 per cent of them uh, will receive radiotherapy. Um, uh, only surgery cures more, uh, uh, and radiotherapy uh, cures more patients uh, from cancer than uh, many of the new cancer drugs uh, put together. Uh, therefore, uh, we are absolutely determined uh, to deliver radiotherapy services across uh, the country and to make sure that they are on a secure and on a sustainable uh, footing now and into the future, uh, and we are taking forward uh, work with a range of parties in order to make sure that that happens uh, now and into the future. I want to yeah, I'll give way to the member. Thank you. I am very grateful to the Minister. Will, will he confirm that in seeking to sustain uh, radiotherapy services across the country, that will include uh, in the future radiotherapy for children, child patients, uh, curative radiotherapy uh, in Aberdeen? 
Yes, I'm, I want to maybe try and address some of the local issues now, and hopefully I'll try and uh, address that particular uh, point. As the member will be aware, uh, there have been two uh, posts recruited to. One started on the 6th of January for a clinical oncologist, and the other is expected to start at the uh, end of this month, uh, between the two of them covering a whole range of uh, different areas from head and neck uh, and neuro-oncology through to GI, colorectal and uh, urological uh, cancers. And I will uh, uh, make sure that the member gets further details on the further recruitment, particularly around uh, child cancer uh, services as well. Uh, but once uh, the Scottish Government became aware uh, of the problems which we are being experienced in the north of the country, we put in place a, a working group which is led by the National Planning uh, Forum uh, to address the wider issues of sustainability and those specialist uh, services. I hear the points that members are making about uh, why some of this issue was not picked up on at an earlier stage, in particular around the planned issues. Um, I think there are clearly some lessons to be learned there for the boards on how they make sure they have proper succession plans in place uh, to deal with these things. However, some of that is compromised by the challenges that they can face around recruiting the right clinical specialists, uh, which can be challenging right across the UK, uh, not just within uh, Scotland itself. But in order to help to make sure that we get greater sustainability in the services, we have also uh, uh, reached agreement to create a virtual single service um, uh, across the three cancer centres in the north between Tayside, uh, NHS Highland and also NHS uh, Grampian to make sure that they are working more closely together in order to ensure that they uh, can cross cover and that they can also help to uh, support continuity of care. What I can say, I will give way to Mr Scott. Mr. Scott. So giving way. On that point you just made about that uh, collaborative work across the three years, does that mean that the consultants and the trained staff will cover each other, as opposed to patients having to move between Inverness, Aberdeen and uh, other locations? Minister? It's probably a a, an opportunity to try and achieve both of those aspects, where clinicians, where they can, uh, as you understand it may be that there are technical aspects about certain care that has to be provided in a particular setting uh, for a particular patient, uh, given the treatment they require, but it's to try and make sure that we can use the staff much more effectively over those three areas. Uh, uh, but there may be occasions uh, when it is about utilising the resources within those three areas much more effectively, probably more so between Highland and Grampian uh, than it would be between Grampian and uh, Tayside, given the nature of the facility which we have within uh, uh, Rigmore in NHS Highland. Uh, we can also say that I am uh, satisfied that we are trying to do everything possible to make sure that we do retain and maintain uh, radio, uh, radiotherapy treatment uh, locally. Uh, and I am sure all members will recognise, as uh, several have already pointed out, that is not always possible uh, given the specialist nature of the care. And therefore, there, uh, uh, there will be times when it is necessary for patients to travel elsewhere for that particular specialist treatment. Uh, and that is why, we have, uh, in order to make sure that we uh, avoid delays, uh, we have also got agreement now in place uh, for uh, care pathways into the cancer centres, both in Glasgow and in Edinburgh, uh, for those patients where that expertise can't be delivered locally, but allows that to happen much more quickly uh, and avoids delays for them. Uh, but uh, I would hope that that would be kept to a minimum, uh, but it is something which would be clinically determined uh, rather than being a, a policy matter. Can I also say, uh, President Officer, uh, so far there have been uh, approximately uh, 42 people who have had to be referred out of the north of Scotland for uh, treatment during this particular trying uh, period. Uh, of that total, 33 uh, have now begun uh, their treatment. I understand that others who have not have not started treatment for clinical reasons uh, in itself, uh, but I am sure that all members would be agreed that it is important we make sure uh, that patients are able to access the specialist services that they require as quickly as possible. President officer, if I can uh, just enjoy my remarks to a close, uh, reassure members that we are determined to make sure that we continue to provide the best quality and the best standard of clinical services in the cancer setting and in other settings uh, across the NHS in Scotland. We have taken forward a range of measures to improve services, which have happened over the last uh, number of years through additional investment. We will continue to monitor the progress that has been made in the north of Scotland to make sure that the shortfall was experienced over several months is sufficiently addressed and that we have sustainable services there for the medium and for the long term for all of the patients who require those services within the north of Scotland. Many thanks. I now conclude this debate and suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2 o'clock. Thank you.